Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we're going to be working on a Photoshop animation tutorial. For this one, we're going to focus on just styles. So animating styles inside of Photoshop and then I'm going to show you how to export it as a GIF or as a video file in the end. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to File, New. For this one, we're going to start with a 1920 by 1080. Our resolution is 72 and you want this to be as small as possible. So 72 is going to work just fine. You're not going to be able to print this and it's definitely going to be used only online or on a screen. So don't worry too much about the quality there. RGB color and 8-bit. We'll go ahead and click create. Okay, I'm going to bring up my layers right here. If you don't see those, you can just come here to window layers. I'm going to unlock that and I have my basic default colors here. If you don't, you can just go ahead and click on the little icon right there. Press the option or alt key on your PC and delete and that's going to fill it with that foreground color. So this is going to be our base. Now we're going to come in and add a shape. So I'm going to click on the shape tool and I am using an ellipse tool only because this particular style of animation that we're doing looks best with a circle. You can do it with squares or anything else. It just looks the best or, you know, it's more fluid with a circle or an oval. So just go ahead and click anywhere on the screen. And then uh, ours is going to be 800 wide by 800 high. And I have from center selected. I'm going to click OK. My properties came up for me here because I have them right here in my panel. If they did not come up for you there, you can come up here to Windows Properties window properties and that will come up for you there or you'll have it up here as well either way so i tend to use this one uh, so i'm just gonna come here to the stroke and i'm going to change that to 50 pixels and that's pretty much it you can make this smaller if you like or you know thinner if you like or thicker it's really going to be up to you but i'm going to go ahead and leave mine there and then I'm going to drop this back over here. Now from here, I'm going to add some styles here so that we'll have something to animate. I'm going to make sure that this is directly in the center. Okay, now I'm going to double click right here on the far right hand side to bring up the layer styles for this. The first thing I'm going to do is add a pattern overlay. So I am using this pattern right here. It's a gold foil pattern. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description in case you want to make this on your own. I do have a video that will show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the blend mode at normal, opacity 100%, angle 0, scale 100%. I'm going to go ahead and add an outer glow to this. So for the outer glow, I am using a blend mode screen, opacity 40%. The color I'm using is FCEDDC. My spread is 5, my size is 40, and I'm using... Uh, oops. And I'm using this contour right here. It is called half round. I'm also going to add a stroke here. So for the stroke, the size is going to be 5. The position is inside. Blend mode is normal. Opacity 100%. The fill type is going to be gradient. So for the gradient, I'm using this one right here. It's a gold reflective gradient. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description so you can download that if you're interested in using this one or any gold gradient will do for this. This right here is very important. Our style is linear and our angle, we're gonna, we're gonna start with a 90 degree angle. I say start because when we do the animation, we're gonna, we're gonna go all the way around this style. And then I'll leave our scale at 100. If you want it to feel like it's going slower, you might go up to 150%, but we'll go ahead and leave it at 100% for this one. So we have all of our styles in here and we're gonna start with the animation now. So let's zoom out on this. And I'm gonna come here to Window, Timeline, and that's gonna bring this up down here. So here you have two options. You can create a frame animation or you can create a video timeline. I'm going to go ahead and click on video timeline and that's going to add these two layers. So I have our background layer and I have the ellipse layer. This is where we're going to be doing our animation. If you click it right here, it's going to select it down here. So as long as it's selected here or here, you know, whichever one you're working on, it'll select it down here. 
So we are going to be working on this one. So I'm going to click on this little arrow to show all of our options down here. And we're only going to be working with style for this one. So I'm going to click on that little time clock and that's going to add a little key right here. So all of the styles that we added here are now the beginning point of this animation that we're creating. So this is our starting point. Now I'm going to take this playhead and scrub all the way, you know, to a right up around there. I'm going to bring this in a little bit just so we can see it, but I'll bring it to right around there. And it doesn't really matter where because we can make adjustments to this later. So I'm going to go ahead and click there to add another key at this point. And I'm going to make some changes on this key. So I'm going to just double click right here on the stroke. I'm going to change the angle of this to zero. And then I'm going to go to my outer glow and I'm going to take my opacity down to about 25% and then I'll take my spread down to zero. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to scrub over a little bit more. Click right here to add another key. Double click right here on the stroke again. This time we're taking it to negative 90 degrees. And then I'm going to come here to the outer glow again and I'm going to bring that back up to 50%. And I'm going to bring our size to 50 pixels and I'm going to click OK. Scrub out even further. Click on that key again. Come back in here. Go to stroke. Change that to 180 degrees. Go to the outer glow. And bring that down and then click OK. What's happened here is that from the beginning to this point we made some changes to the angle of that stroke and then we also made some changes to the brightness of this outside layer. So if you look closely you'll see how it starts to fade out. So that's going to be the difference from this key to that key. With this key we brought it all back in. So when I scrub from here to here you can see how that outside glow starts to get very very bright and strong. And then with this one we brought it down again so you can see how it kind of went away a little bit. Now for the last one we're going to take the playhead all the way to the end of the animation. I'm going to click on this key to add that key to the end of this animation. But instead of creating more settings here, what I'm going to do is come to this first one, right click, and I'm going to copy those. Now I'm going to come to the end, right click and paste those settings. So that way our beginning and our end are exactly the same. This is just going to help with when we loop it. So we're going to come here to the little gear icon. Our resolution is 50% and you need to make sure that loop playback is selected in order for this to loop over and over again. This is more important for a GIF than it is for like an MP4 file. Obviously an MP4 file is just going to stop. But if you are creating a, a GIF file, you want to make sure that the loop playback is selected. And I'm going to go ahead and press play. You can see what that looks like. So I have a few different ways that I would use this. Of course, you know, you can use it for whatever you want, but I would use it maybe to add a logo here in the middle section. As a countdown timer, just add some numbers here in the middle. Do it like a reveal or something, maybe for Instagram or something like that. Or also as a wait screen, like right before a webinar. So let me show you what I mean. This is one that I created as a wait screen. And all it does is just kind of give a little bit of interest to the words here. It doesn't seem as boring when you're sitting there staring at something, you know, you're waiting for a webinar or something to start. Just, just to add a little bit of interest there. Uh, but also, let me turn these on and turn, turn this on. So this is my logo. You can also add the logo in the middle like this. And then just use this kind of as a frame to frame out the logo. And then I have um, this one. So this is like a countdown timer. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on this one. So you can see how that would work. And this is pretty simple. All I did was add each number as a layer here. And then when you hover over these right here, you'll see that you get these fork looking things. And then you can use those to drag 
them in or out and you can you have a whole bunch of different options right here and you can add duration of how long you want this to fade and all of that but all you do is grab it and drag it over and it's going to pop it in there so then when you press play it's going to start it take it away and it's um, actually pretty simple to do that those are just a few ideas of how you could use this i wanted to show you how to export something like this as a GIF, what I'm gonna do is just take that away because I just want this ring right here. So I'm gonna come up here to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And then when you get to this screen, um, just make sure that GIF is selected and that you make this as small as possible. Right now it is at 7.9 megs, which is a pretty big file. So you might wanna bring this down, maybe 1280 by 720. Uh, would be a little bit more manageable for this. If you're using it for social media or something, you can probably make it much smaller. So if I wanted to make this into a video, then I'd come here to this little arrow right here. This is gonna render the video. So I'll just go ahead and click on that. It's gonna bring this up and I can name this, I'll just call it wait screen. I'll select a folder for it, select the size, and then select the frame rate and all of that stuff here, and then just choose render. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, share, subscribe to this channel. It really does help me uh, to be able to bring you even more videos. And also leave me a comment down in the description if you have anything that you'd like to see on this channel. Or if you have any tips on anything that I missed or how to create something like this even better. I always read all of those comments. And don't forget to go over to prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.